Okay, so uh, the topic that we're going to look at now is, uh, thank you, one that's called binomial probability. And uh, we'll get to the heart of what exactly that means in just a minute. But we're going to take a look at an experiment that uh, lends itself nicely to the problem. So list the ways that you can flip one head out of four coin tosses. Okay, so for example, if you were to do this and end up with uh, one head, you'd have, for example, head, tail, tail, tail. Um, another one could be tail, head, tail, tail. And finally, three tails and a head. So there's actually four ways to do this. If you flip a coin uh, four times, there's four ways that you can get exactly one head. Okay, so let's take a look at the probability for each of these outcomes. So, for example, the first outcome there, if I was to list the probabilities, what's the probability you flip a head for a coin? One half. Yeah, one half. One out of two. Genius. Okay. Now, there's three tails here. Tails, tails, tails. What's the probability that it comes up tails? It's also a half. So instead of writing a half down all those times, I'm going to write it down as a half cubed. Um, and of course, this is a half with one. Now, we could rewrite all the other ones here, but of course, we'd just be repeating the same thing. The probability is going to look the same for all four outcomes that we have there, right? So, this is the probability that we get for a single outcome, and there are four of the outcomes. So, if I wanted to actually calculate what's the probability exactly one head is flipped, out of four coin tosses, well, there's four ways for that to happen. And for each of them, there is one half times one half, oops, sorry, cubed for a probability. So if I was to put that in the calculator, I believe I'm going to have a, a quarter, 25% chance. So we're going to look at this problem just in a second. Let's talk about what binomial probabilities are. Oops. So for a binomial probability, we need a better strategy. Something like the first one was fairly trivial. But when we get to something like 12 coin tosses and 5 heads, there's a lot of uh, outcomes there. So. Let's apply the same strategy. We'll do the same three steps. Okay, the first step was how many ways can you flip one head and four coins? This one is now asking how many ways can you flip five heads if you have 12 coins? Well, if you're ever kind of like, oh, geez. It's getting kind of hard to do. We can go back to basics. So there's 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. How many heads do I, I want again here? Five. So wherever I end up putting this, I'm going to have, um, I have to arrange five heads in here. So for example, I could do this like this. I could have a head. I could have a head. Maybe this is what it looks like in my problem. Now, what happens to the tails at this point? They're just the remaining pieces, right? Even though uh, you think you have to choose the tails as well, once you've chosen where the heads go, the tails just fill up the remainder. So how many ways can I count this up if I, have, um, if I had all these spaces to fill in the heads? Well, there's 12 spaces, right? And I want five of them to be heads. So it's actually going to turn out that there's 12 choose five ways. Now, you can also think of this like a Mississippi question, the ones that we did earlier. Um, there's going to be 12 factorial items. There will be seven of them that are repeated as tails, and five of them that are repeated as heads. That's the same thing as 12 choose five. And of course, that's the same thing as 12 choose 7 as well. 
Okay, but because we were given the numbers 5 and 12, just so you kind of see the pattern there, if 12 choose 5, that's the way to do it. The first part of the question that we had, there's 4 choose 1. Okay. So, now we have a strategy for counting how many ways we can do this. Okay. Let's think about the probabilities now. How can we get the probabilities for 1? So I have, we said, what's the probability of flipping a head? One half. How many heads do I have? Five. Okay, the probability for flipping a tail was one half, and there will be seven of those. So you can jumble them around however you want, and whatever jumble you come up with is one of these possible scenarios. So there's this many, each of them has this probability, so the answer is going to be 12 choose 7 times 1 half to the 5th times 1 half to the 7th. Now I'm deliberately writing this as 1 half to the 5th and 1 half to the 7th instead of 1 half to the 12th because a coin happens to have equal probability for heads and tails. If it was dice, that would change things. There would be, be different probabilities. Yes, Mona? Um, why is it 12 choose 7? Um... Because I looked at the wrong number. It's the same thing as 12 choose 5, but I looked at the wrong number. Yeah, sorry. Yes, Thomas? By which? The probability of doing this one way. So, <laughs> oh, children. Yeah, no kidding. I don't mean it that way. Okay, which way do you mean it then? Did you guys, you guys are going to need nap time soon at this, uh, at this rate. Okay, so the probability for one way, that's calculating the probability for one of these possible 12 choose 5 scenarios. Okay, so here is a binomial probability. This is a formula that you're going to get. This comes on your government exam. And here's the key idea for a binomial experiment. So a binomial experiment is one in which there are two basic outcomes. So heads, tails, red, black, yes, no. Um, the probability for each trial has to be independent or this will not work. Okay. So for example, if we use a deck of cards and we do not replace them, so cards without replacement, then it is not a binomial experiment. We start changing the sample space when we take cards out. That changes the probability, so it is not independent from trial to trial. Okay, some examples that are, well, we've talked about the coins already. Anything else you can think of where they are two basic outcomes and uh, it has to be independent every time you do it? Yes, no. Okay, yes, no, sure. I'm not sure uh, how we'd word that, but and a yes, no would be two outcomes. Sorry? Boy, girl, yeah, boy, girl. So if you heard something like a family, boy and girl is independent each time and, sorry? Dice, yes, dice are also an example, um, but you have to be careful about how a dice would be used. So how, can you give me an example of something that we binomial with dice? You're right, but even odd, rolling a six, not rolling a six, right? Whatever it is, as long as it's um, one outcome or it's uh, not, so it's either going to be successful or fail. It's harder to do if uh, you start making complicated problems. But anyways, those are some of the key things that have to be there in order for us to uh, use a binomial theorem or binomial probabilities.